much for joining us here tonight on Halton News. It's Thursday, May 28th, and I'm Jessica Kading. There have been five new cases of COVID-19 confirmed in our region since yesterday, but with eight new recoveries, the total number of active, confirmed, and probable cases in Halton is now 123. This is, of course, good news, as it seems like things are going in the right direction. As MPP Stephen Crawford says in this next clip, if these numbers continue to see improvement across the province, stage two of reopening the economy could come sooner than you might think. Let's take a look. Yeah, thanks, Jessica. And uh, phase one so far has, has been, it's been working well. And, and, you know, if you look at the COVID numbers over the last number of days, the, the numbers have actually been getting a little lower, which is a good sign. Uh, the numbers of tests have been going up. So bottom line is, you know, it's possible that within the next one to two weeks, we will actually move to phase two, which is a much bigger opening up of our economy. But in order for us to do that, we need to make sure that the current infection rates stay at around the same level or trend even lower. And if that's the case, it will likely be within one to two weeks. So we have that to look forward to. And we have been hearing that in the next few days, some health, some, some dentist office, maybe some chiropractors will be allowed to open. Can you speak to that? Yeah, so just the other day, uh, Minister Elliott and Premier Ford announced that there's a lot of health related professions that can actually open up. Now, the caveat to that is that it's, it's got to be overseen by the, the regulatory bodies in their respective professions. So, for example, with the, the dentists, the Royal uh, College of Dental Surgeons must oversee that they've got in place for all the dentists across Ontario the proper procedures as to how to open up. And now that this is the case as well for other professions, just to give an example, uh, optometrists, uh, psychologists, massage therapists, therapists, chiropractors. So there's a number of health related occupations that may be able to open up within within days. But again, the regulatory body of each one of those groups has got to have the policies and procedures in place so that we ensure uh, the safety of the consumers here in Ontario. And what were you saying, could, could you remind us again, when we are getting into phase two, potentially over the next one to two weeks, what phase two involves? Yeah, it's, it's a much broader opening up. Like uh, as we go right now, uh, there's a lot of retail stores, for example, that still haven't had the ability to open up. So the, basically it'll open up the broader economy. Right now, uh, a lot of retail stores are very limited in terms of what stores are open and what are not. So this will be a much more broader opening up and we hope that that will happen. But again, it depends on on the, the, the infection rates over the next one to two weeks. So fingers crossed. I think we're all in this together. The people of Ontario, the people of Oakville have been doing a great job in terms of reducing the transmissions, but we've got to continue that in order to get this economy opened up. And then, uh, you know, it's going to be a new economy for a while. It's going to be a new way of doing business. We'll have to adapt. But in the end, uh, we'll come out of this stronger. And uh, I'm very confident, of, you know, in the ability of the people of Ontario to, to come through this together. Well, thank you so much for bringing us this update today. We will connect with you again soon. My pleasure. Thanks a lot for having me, Jessica. Take care. Of course, it's not all good news. In fact, the reports that have come out about the state of some of our long-term care homes and the poor treatment some seniors have been experiencing is nothing short of appalling. I asked Oakville North Burlington MPP Effie Triantafilopoulos to comment on the recent reports and the government's response. Yes, I'd be happy to, Jessica. Um, as you may have seen in the news yesterday and today, the, pre the Premier has made it very clear about hearing the results of the Canadian Armed Forces report, the government has moved very, very rapidly. We're looking at all measures to support our most vulnerable residents. And in particular, in the five homes that were most at risk, they're adding additional inspectors to go in and support uh, the, the efforts there. It, uh, we've also asked the Canadian Armed Forces to remain in those homes until June the 12th. Uh, in addition, the Premier today and the Minister of Long-Term Care spoke about the need to move forward on our independent inquiry and instead of having it wait until September, they're moving to have it actually commence in July. So these are all measures that we're taking to be able to rapidly move in and address where the, the most vulnerable are and where the greatest need is. And what do you suspect the next step will be? Well, I, um, I think we need to put it in, in some context. 
uh, COVID uh, was quite an unprecedented uh, situation. And so the, the, the government was already moving rapidly to be able to shore up our long-term care needs in our, in our communities. Uh, 87, I think it's something like 87% of long-term care homes are in what we call the green zone. There's only about 19 of them that are in the red zone where they need additional support. But beyond that, for decades now, we know that the long-term care homes um, required more, more, for example, staffing, um, personal support workers, nurses. These are, are very difficult times that we're dealing with and COVID just added an added um, sort of pressure and an extra lens on, on the fact that for decades now, we've needed to address the issues around long-term care. And how are our long-term care homes in Oakville, North Burlington faring through all this? Well, that's really our, our really our good news. In Oakville and actually across the, the Halton region, although we've had some very minor outbreaks, um, they've, only, they've only been in a handful of homes. And in fact, we've been fortunate in that we've also had no deaths. So um, our community, I think, is being well served by the staff, the nurses, the long-term care homes have, the, the management, and also the, the personal support workers that are there. So we're very fortunate in, in Halton that we haven't had the kind of, um, the, the kind of distress that some of the other homes have had. The, the important thing to, to note is that even before this crisis, our Minister of Long-Term Care and our government had been moving rapidly to look at our staffing issues and to look at other ways in which we can support long-term care homes. In some of the other areas, hospitals have now gone in to a help to help with an in infection protocols to assist the long-term care community there in order to get the kind of support they need there. Uh, the Premier today said he'll leave no stone unturned, that this is uh, very important to him personally, but also to all of the, the government that we support our, um, our, most, our most vulnerable citizens. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and bringing us this update. We definitely look forward to having you back on the show and appreciate your weekly appearances. Thank you so much. Another topic that has been coming up frequently revolves around how businesses are doing since having to either close their doors or rethink how to do business as the COVID-19 restrictions continue. To get a better sense of the local situation, the town of Milton has statistics to share. Melissa Candelaria reports. Businesses in the town of Milton are hurting in these pandemic times. That is according to Mayor Gord Kranz, who says the difficulties they're facing was made evident in a recent survey. The survey was sent out earlier in the month. Kranz says there was some interesting results. Out of the 100%, and I'm going to use the 100%, 90, uh, 96% of the people that were uh, surveyed reported some loss in business, uh, 96%. No, that, that did surprise me a bit. No, some of it was very minor. Some of it, of course, was very major. But of that survey as well, 2% said we're doing much better now after the uh, you know virus uh, went to being than ever before. So a very small segment of society here in Melton is doing much better, but that's a very small percentage. So it's kind of interesting some of those uh, stats. Some of the businesses dealing with difficulties in particular, according to Kranz, are those under the local BIA. And for the most part, they represent old Main Street areas of a community as it is in Melton. Now, when you talk about old Main Street areas, such as Melton, there's many, many small businesses that have been definitely hurting. And again, I use the illustration of the maybe bars and restaurants, barbershop, beauty salons, where they might employ maybe two or three people or eight or 10 people. They're the ones that's really hurting. Now, does that mean some of these businesses are going to have to shut down? Krantz says, maybe. But as an example, uh, with the bar and restaurants uh, in the town of Melton or the region of Fulton, I said earlier on, uh, I predict that probably at least 20, 25% will not survive. Uh, but out of the ashes uh, come new opportunities as well. So it's kind of sad, but that just happens to be the reality that we're in. And uh, 
those are the ones that I think that are most uh, vulnerable. Following these staggering results on the conditions of the local businesses during these pandemic times, uh, the question remains, what happens next? What can the town of Milton do to help these businesses? Well, Mayor Kranz says they are going to be reaching out to them again. And what we're going to do, we're going to once again send a survey out here in Milton through the Chamber of Commerce and the BIAs to ask them to reply once again. And of course, a lot of it will be kept confidential, even though the, the numbers will be there. But, uh, you know, to suggest, do they think they can survive? What will it take for them to survive? Reporting for Halton News, I'm Melissa Candelaria. I was also able to connect with Oakville MP Anita Anand today, who's been answering some frequently asked questions about our supply of personal protective equipment. Well, it's so nice to see you again, Jessica, even though it's raining a little bit outside here in Oakville, it's always nice to be on your show with you. Uh, in terms of Ottawa, this week we continued with the business in the House of Commons. We are running a hybrid parliament now, so all 338 members of the House of Commons can participate either by video or in the House of Commons itself. And that means question period for two hours every day from Monday to Thursday. So I'm actually just coming out of question period now. And I am a minister, so I do receive a lot of questions regarding personal protective equipment and procurement. It's a really wonderful time to be able to engage in debate regarding this issue. Wow, well, what are, what are one of the frequently asked questions about that? One of the things that we've been talking a lot about is the supply chains that we have internationally and domestically and the retooling of domestic business here at home. This week we announced a contract with General Motors for the production of non-medical masks. And that's very exciting because right here in Oshawa, Ontario, we're going to have the production of masks taking place in the short term. And this just is a signal of the way in which our economy as it opens up is going to be turning to the use of masks as we've talked about before. As we know, Dr. Theresa Tam and the Public Health Agency of Canada have said that when social distancing is not possible, we should be wearing masks. And so this contract is just another example of the way in which the economy is shifting to abide by public health uh, knowledge. And how is our PPE supply in Oakville? The federal perspective is that we are ordering continuous amounts to fulfill provincial and territorial requests. And in terms of Oakville's PPE needs, I have spoken with the CEO of the Oakville Hospital, and she has assured me that their PPE stocks are doing well. Of course, as minister, I cannot directly provide PPE to individual businesses and hospitals in the area, but I have been trying to connect those in need of PPE with those who can supply PPE by donation. And so we did have a constituent this week who purchased masks on her own and donated those masks to those in need, which was very wonderful to see. Thanks to Maureen Javid for that. And how does the federal government feel that phase one is, is, is doing here in Ontario? The provincial government has obviously entered into phase one, considering phase two coming up next. What is the federal perspective on that? So the federal perspective in Ontario's concern as well as across the country is to make sure that we're able to support the provinces and territories. And so you'll recall that Prime Minister Trudeau said that he would very much be on board with helping the provinces regarding testing and testing supplies. And so, of course, when we are procuring PPE, we're also making strong attempts to procure the items needed for testing, that's swabs, reagent, as well as looking into the rapid test kits, which are hard, harder to come by, but we are still working hard to procure those. Well, thank you so much for all that you're doing. It certainly sounds like you've had an incredibly busy week <laughs> as we started the interview talking about all the, all the uh, question period time, but um, we appreciate you making the time for us as well, and we look forward to having you back on soon. 
Jessica, it's a highlight of my week talking to you, and I look forward to next week when we can do it again. Thank you. And thank you for being with us here on Halton News. We do need to take a short break, but we'll be right back with Burlington's Mayor Marianne Mead Ward on steps being taken to restrict beach access. Stay with us. Welcome back to Halton News. We don't want you to be surprised when you see fencing keeping you off of our beaches. Burlington's beach strip remains closed under provincial order during COVID-19. But as you probably saw across social media, that did not stop people from seeking some respite from the heat along the lake. Police Chief Tanner joined Mary, Mary Ann Mead Ward to discuss some of the challenges that the city faced this past weekend. I think we handed out 28 uh provincial offense notices over the weekend related to COVID. So we've typically been dealing with COVID as a, as a warning, as an education. Uh, there haven't been a large number of charges throughout these now 12 weeks that we've all lived through. Um, a lot of it's been warnings and people have moved off of parkland or out of, you know, those social gathering sort of situations. If they don't adhere to those, that direction, of course, there are charges. So um, and they are being laid more now, I think, than before for people that are problematic. So the 28 tickets, is that just for Burlington over that weekend or was that Halton Region? I believe that was Halton Region, uh, although there were some that were related to the beach strip and some of the issues that were around. And of course, with the weather yesterday and today, uh, people are going to want to go to those parks. So we need to be so strong as you are and as regional council is in the province we still need to keep social distancing. We still need to wear a mask if you can't keep that six feet. Uh, I, I have not found it difficult to keep six feet of distance. So hopefully most people can, but if they put themselves into a situation, well, like the park in Toronto over the weekend, uh, where there's hundreds or thousands of people that just happen, it's, uh, it's really, really risky. And why risk your health or someone else's? Exactly. We uh, and, and people may not be aware that even though some parks are open, there's still a long list of things that have, have remained closed under the provincial emergency order. And one of those is our beach strip. So our sand beach attached to Spencer Smith. So the park itself is open, but uh, and the trail that goes through the park is open. But the actual beach is closed by provincial emergency orders. And, and so I know it's a confusing array of uh, you know, of regulations that the public is uh, having to learn very quickly and it changes fairly regularly. We had that sort of brief, uh, I think, moment of hope when things were being reopened and then we saw the numbers go right back up again. You know, now we have to fence off in, in for our beach, even though it's signed closed under the provincial emergency order. So I know people are itching to get outside, uh, but it's still so important, as you said, to maintain that physical distance from anyone you don't live with. And that's a Burlington bylaw. So there's the provincial orders, which are no more than five people uh, unrelated, as, uh, uh, unless, unless all five are members of your family. Um, you have to stay six feet away from anyone you don't live with. And now a we'll look out over Oakville's Brawny Pier on this rainy afternoon. There's a 60% chance these showers will return tomorrow, but we do expect breaks with some sunshine peeking from behind those clouds. The skies will clear for our weekend and you can expect full sunshine, but cooler than we've been experiencing lately, only reaching a high of 17 degrees on both Saturday and Sunday. Then starting next week, just a bit warmer, reaching 19 on Monday and Tuesday. The Conference Board of Canada expects the country's economy to contract by a total of 4.3% this year in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis. That number does, not take, does take into account a projected strong economic rebound during the final two quarters of 2020. Let's take a look at how some of our local companies performed in today's Market Watch. Still ahead, the Burlington Food Bank. We'll be right back after this.
Thanks for staying with us here on Halton News. I'm Jessica Kading. While the Burlington Food Bank has been providing us with regular updates as they continue to help the community during COVID-19 and beyond, they're not the only ones providing food services. Today, they took some time to thank some of the other local organizations that are doing their part in Burlington to keep everyone fed. Hi, this is Robin Bailey, the Executive Director of the Burlington Food Bank. Uh, we just want to take a couple of minutes just thanking our uh, various community partners. Uh, the Salvation Army have been a great partner of ours over the number of years. Uh, just being able to support the east side of the city while we take care of the west side of the city a little bit more. Um, we also wanted to thank the Compassion Society. They reach a vulnerable sector that we sometimes aren't able to. Uh, just some homeless folk and things that we, uh, we maybe don't connect with in the same way. And we also wanted to thank uh, Wellington Square and their Community Meals Program. Uh, we support them throughout the year, every year. Uh, they are doing a tremendous job and they've gotten great support from Glad Tidings Church as well as Open Doors uh, at St. Christopher's who've been just tremendous to us. We've mentioned them a few times about how great a partner they've been for us during COVID. So again, thank you to those various community partners and Food for Life as well for, uh, for what they do in spreading uh, some of the salvage food from around the city and being able to, uh, to bring it out to us that we're able to share it with uh, our neighbors. And now we'd ask you to join Kojiko's Do 5, Give 5, Ask 5 challenge in support of the Halton Learning Foundation and students in the Halton School Board who are in need. The idea is to help the Halton Learning Foundation to raise $5,000 by June 1st to provide basic necessities for Halton District School Board students and their families who are struggling due to pandemic-related closures. To participate, all you need to do is walk, run, bike, or move for five kilometers, then text HALTON to 45678 to donate at least $5 to the Halton Learning Foundation, and then use social media to nominate your friends to do the same. It's that easy. Don't forget to use the hashtag KojikoGive5Challenge. The Downtown Oakville Cyber Sidewalk Sale is on now through Sunday, May 31st. You can shop from the comfort of your own home, day or night. There's many retailers offering free shipping and local delivery. For more information, including a list of participating stores, please visit oakvilledowntown.com. And now we'll look at what's coming up tonight on your TV. For those of you in the Burlington and Oakville market, we have Halton Women's Place with Carmbozzo, Community Cultures follows at 7.30, and then back-to-back -back episodes of West End Jazz starts at 8.00. If you're watching in Milton or Halton Hills, Acton Up with Alex Hilson starts at 7, followed by Let's Just Do This with Margaret Wallace Duffy, and then Local Matters at 8, and don't forget Seth Ferguson, he presents Real Estate Simplified at 8.30. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. If you'd like more, you can find us online at URTV.TV. For Halton News, I'm Jessica Kading.